You've got those true fashions shining through Those lovely true fashions And your clothes are lovely So don't be afraid to wear nice clothes Your true fashions True fashions shining like a wardrobe. Oh, hey, I was just thinking long and hard about fine fashions. This is a video about Dark Souls 3. Now, you might not have clicked on a video about Dark Souls 3 to listen to a man talk about clothes. No, actually, no, that's, that's exactly what you've just done. Because let's be real here for a hot moment. I found Dark Souls 3 to be quite boring. That doesn't mean it's a boring game. I was just maybe done with Souls by the time it came out. I mean, I played the first game to death. I dissected the sequel with a frankly too long video. And when the third game came out, everyone said, Matt, tell us how you feel about the third one. And you know what? I'm gonna open my heart for you here. Like I'm impatiently and irresponsibly opening a packet of biscuits. Dark Souls 3 made me feel almost nothing. There were elements I liked, sure, but as a piece of work, it never really felt like anything more than pastiche. Nothing shocked me, nothing amazed me. It paled in comparison to the electrifying Bloodborne, which still firmly remains underneath my skin. And yet what I loved about Dark Souls 3 was dressing up and going out on the town. The wealth of cool clothes to choose between this time was outstanding and the temptation to try and adjust your armor to better suit the look of your current favorite weapon was real and powerful. Very few games let players really fixate on taking the time to make themselves look unique and cool, and I still think it remains one of the great unsung strengths of Destiny. Because as we used to remember when we were kids, dressing up is a massive part of play. And it's an aspect that frequently gets forgotten when we're adults. Sure, games let you change your clothes, but that isn't the same. Dressing up represents a shift in identity, a change in appearance, which also comes with a change in context. And in Dark Souls games, you define that context yourself. But that doesn't have to be the case. The clearest example of the power of dressing up is probably Red Dead Redemption's bandana. John Marsden is a good man. He would not do bad things unless he wears a bandana and then he can do the bad things because it's not really you. It's, it's like bad John. But with Dark Souls 3, while I felt that the retreading of ground made the game thematically and atmospherically uninteresting, the broad wealth of stuff that they'd amassed over these games made for an incredible dressing up box. And the appeal of this is amplified by the fact that you're often dressing up as things that already exist in the world. So when you dress up like one of those enemies, you're sort of role-playing as one of them in a weird way. It's a transformation that extends beyond aesthetics, which is further supported by the wide array of animated gestures that you can use to support the characters that you've made. And my favorite character thing that I used to do was the Abyss Watchers, all right? Don't judge me here. I dress up like one of them, I go and use a massive sword, and then I just went and helped people through difficult sections or helped them kill bosses. But my character had a strict ritual, right? Others would bow when I summoned them in or got summoned. I would merely extend my sword in offering once upon arrival and once more at the point when my task was done. Ah, oh, and I did this for hours. It was my favorite thing in the game. And this, right, this is role playing. Something that I find to be quite rare in video games. You know, for me, I enjoy this teenage wank power fantasy of being a powerful, stern, honest knight with a massive sword, largely because I'm not actually very good at video games. For me, this pretense of skill and mastery is a fun bit of play pretend. Other people play different roles. You've got jokers using comedic combinations of armors and emotes to poke fun at the game's offered roles because dressing up isn't just about emulation. It plays a huge part in deconstructing roles too, making fun of them. You've also got tricksters, those who choose appearances that make them seem friendly or harmless, dressing up to purposefully subvert 
expectations. And then you've got people who really don't care and just have stuff equipped that has decent stats, sure. But a lot of the time, people choose very specific appearances and demeanours. And this playful dressing up works beautifully here for two reasons. You've got the ambiguity of the world means that players can choose to define their own meanings if they want to. And that extends to aesthetics too. And secondly, the identities you have are not fixed. Hard stat limits do mean that you can't just wear whatever you want, willy-nilly, but you can largely shift your style at any point in a wide manner of ways. An infinite inventory space means you carry your wardrobe around with you at all times. Handy. You're never forced to permanently choose your character's aesthetic, and that also extends to who your character is. You can be really nice or really nasty, and at any point, have a total change of heart. The same bastard who invades your game in jet black armor and murders you at the worst possible time you might have just spent the whole day before that selflessly helping strangers out in a suit of gleaming golden armor. Although then again, I suppose it's those ones that you really want to watch very closely. Few games manage this idea of switching the concept of who you are on the fly, and if they do, they often do it quite literally, like in GTA V. And partially that's because games traditionally have been interested in the concept of karma and permanence, the idea that the world is somehow constantly watching you, judging everything you do, and largely then rewarding you the most for behaving consistently. And rewards for consistency in games extend beyond behaviour. Armor set bonuses are common, or obvious skill combos are satisfying mechanics when everything clicks, but discourage players away from freedom of expression, removing an aesthetic choice in favor of a more strongly mechanical one. Both morally and aesthetically, Dark Souls 3 doesn't judge. Be good, be bad, be serious, be silly. Jump around between all of the options like a anxious, jittery hamster at a temporary buffet. You shouldn't be able to optimize wearing clothes, and yet it's weird and deeply video games that most of the time in most games, you can. So that's a cool thing that could maybe shift around a bit. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye! <laughs> Thanks very much for watching this video. A couple of things you should know. First of all, we don't have any adverts on our YouTube channel. It's entirely crowdfunded. If you really love what we do, you can go to patreon.com forward slash cool ghosts. Secondly, if you want to have a chat about this video in a bit more depth, write a longer comment, have a conversation, go to coolghosts.net where that sort of thing happens. There'll be links in the description. Finally, if you enjoyed this and you want more, then of course do the YouTube thing, press the subscribe buttons. God, I'm rubbish at this, aren't I? Terrible. Thanks very much. Bye.